Welcome to Ash Wednesday, the first day of the Lenten season. It is the only season that begins midweek, which begins to give us the significance of what we are embarking on. I'm going to invite you to find your Ash Wednesday bag, and I hope you have already looked at it for suggestions of things to do on Ash Wednesday to begin the, this particular season and I hope that now as we begin, you will particularly find the little bag that has the ashes in it and it has a wet wipe. I'll tell you what to do with that later on. And the other thing that you're going to need for this service for yourself to do is the brochure where at the end we make our commitment to our own individual Lenten practices. And so if you will make sure you have your ashes, the little bag of ashes, and this brochure, dear friends, I invite you to let us make a right beginning as we offer ourselves to God to observe a holy Lent. Please join me as we read together the selections from Psalm 51, the ultimate penitent hymn of Psal from the Psalter. From your unfailing love, O God, have mercy upon me. Blot out my transgressions, cleanse me from sin, purge my iniquity. For my transgressions and my sin are ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. The sacrifices you require are broken, contrite hearts. O God, you won't despise these if they're from our inward parts. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Create in me a clean heart, O God.
Every year at Ash Wednesday, we say what people ordinarily don't want to hear. And that is, we're all going to die. I don't know when, don't know where, but of this, I am absolutely certain every one of us is going to die. And as a pastor, I know every single year that everybody who is observing Ash Wednesday this year will not be with us next year. And you're going to say, I tuned in to hear that. You know, pre-pandemic, it was kind of a shocking thing to talk about the fragility of life. There were times that I, I wanted to never have but wanted to get a casket and wheel it in. Never have. This year, I wasn't even tempted. This year, I don't even have to do anything to impress upon us the reality of the fragility of life. For the pandemic has shaken all of the things that we trusted and we counted on in one way or another to smaller or larger extents, but I don't know anybody who has not had to come face to face, sometimes in daily ways, with the fragility of life. Ash Wednesday is the time that we voluntarily bring before people this reality, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, words I'll say at a graveside for people that I love between now and the next Ash Wednesday. And the reason that we voluntarily do this and give this what might otherwise be considered grim message, it is we're going to look at death in the face in a deliberate way to say two things. One thing is to say, we are not afraid. We know where this story ends. See, this is the bookend of Easter, Ash Wednesday is. Ash Wednesday, we begin by saying death is not some, some kind of remote idea that theoretically applies to other people, doesn't apply to me. No, no, no. We're every one of us going to face our own death. I've made some suggestions for you in how to observe Ash Wednesday. It includes writing out your funeral service wishes. It includes updating your will. It included taking a walk in the cemetery. I hope you did all those things. Today is the day that we do not run from the reality of death. The reason we don't run from it, though, is a hopeful thing. It's because we know that on Easter Sunday, we're going to be singing the praises of our Savior who has conquered death. Not, not just for him, but for us. And that gives us the courage. I tell you, I don't know how, Christian, how people who are not Christians are making it through all of this fragility that the pandemic has brought. I know how I am surviving. And that's the anchor of my faith, that I need not be afraid not even of death. And that is our first affirmation. That's what ashes mean. And, and when you impose them on yourself, it is your way of saying, we know death is real. Death is real for me. Death is real for you. And we're not afraid. And the other thing that the ashes remind us is that we've got a limited amount of time which means we've got to do the very best we can with the time we've got. 
It, it means we are not going to take life for granted. It means we are not going to take our relationships for granted. It means we're not going to take our opportunities for granted. It means that we are going to live the best and most holy lives we possibly can. So that when we come to that time, when it is earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, people will remember that we gave our all. We gave our best for what is good. And that means we've got some rearranging to do. It means we don't take sin lightly. And when we think about it, we're thinking that there are things we need to change in our lives. Because we are freshly reminded that we've only got a little bit of time. Because of that, we're going to make the most of the time that we have. So that's the invitation for the imposition of ashes. If you have had times of fear as you have heard one more bad outcome after another from this coronavirus and other things as life has continued to happen. Let ashes be the sign that those who are in Christ need not be afraid. And for those of us who recognize that we have a privilege of living we're not going to take it for granted. And so to be our best, we're going to take our sin seriously so that we don't fritter away the time we've got. So that we observe the Lenten disciplines as a way of making the most of the gift of what we have. Every one of you has a gift of life tonight. Ordinarily, the imposition of ashes is one of my very favorite things to do. There's nothing that says a preacher has to impose ashes. There's nothing in our ordination training that is about imposing ashes. And so, because of the pandemic and we struggled, but there's really not a safe way for us to impose ashes on others. You'll find in your Lenten bag that we have made up, our young people made up the ashes. We, we had ashes and we've already mixed them with the oil because we've learned that sometimes if you just give people ashes, they mix them with water and then that creates lye. Uh, so it burns the ashes into your forehead. So we have saved you from that and the young, our young people have put together ashes that will stick. You're welcome to put them on your hand or on your forehead. If you're in a family unit where you all are, you know, live together, if you want to impose ashes on each other, you're welcome to do that. You know, every baptized believer in United Methodist faith is a minister. So to prepare our hearts to receive this sign of the cross where we say we are offering ourselves to this sacred time. To thank God that we don't have to be afraid of death and to say we want to make the most of the life that we have. That we're going to turn away from sin. The, the traditional questions when people come forward ordinarily, and this one of my favorite of all services, is will you turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel? And there are one of two answers that I'd like for you to give. We're going to do this question all at one time, and then you'll do the imposition of ashes. But I want you to listen. Will you turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel? One answer is, I will. And the other answer is, I will try. Friends, there is no right answer except what's honest. And so if you, if you are right in there, right now, in the midst of all that life is bringing you, and you're ready to say, I will, then you say it. That's fine. If you know your sin and what you need to do to get there, and I will try is the most honest answer, then I want you to give the honest answer. Because God doesn't care about a pretense. Lent of all sea, I mean, it's always right to be honest in Christian faith. But Lent of all times is the time to be honest. And so now I'm going to ask corporately the question. Will you turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel? And 
then together I want you to say, I will or I will try. If you need to say it in your heart because you don't want people pointing fingers at you and your family, I don't care. Give God an answer. And immediately after that, we'll impose the ashes on yourselves or in your family unit. Let us pray. Dear God, you're asking us an important question tonight. Will we turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel? We want to give you an honest answer knowing that you take every inclination that we offer to you. And you make it oh so much more than it could ever be. So we're not trying to impress you. We're just trying to get a right start this Lent. And so honor our desire to give ourselves fully to you as we seek to honor the Savior who gives us courage in the face of the reality of death and the Savior who can teach us to turn away from sin. Amen. Beloved in Christ, will you turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel? And your answer is... I'm going to invite you to take the brochure that was in your Lenten bag for the invitation 
to observe the Lenten disciplines. And then you will see on the inside the opportunity for you to give some personal thought to the different tried and true practices which we know cleanse us from our sins and draw us closer to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for Easter by a season of penitence, fasting, and prayer. The season of 40 days provides a time in which converts to the faith are prepared for baptism into the body of Christ. It is also a time when persons who have committed serious sins and become separated from the community of faith are reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thus the whole congregation is reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our baptismal faith. Beloved, in the name of the Lord, I invite you to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, by penitence, prayer, fasting, and giving, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. And so now, I invite you to look at those tried and true practices. And in the silence of your own heart, I invite you to pray about your financial support of God's work. In the silence of your own heart, talk to God about the condition of your prayer life. In the silence of your own heart, pray about what you might give up for Lent to remind you of Christ's sacrifice for you. In the silence of your own heart, pray about your devotional life, your study of God's word, both individually and with others. In the silence of your own heart, pray about the Lenten practice of extending grace and reconciliation. Who is God calling you to reach out to, to offer peace and mercy? And now in the silence of your own heart, ask for God's help for any of the changes that God is asking you to make so that you will make the most of the time that you have and the most of this Lenten season. Let us pray. Dear God, you and you alone know the things that you have laid on our heart and the things that we write down to offer to you during this season of Lent. And you and you alone know the changes that we need to make to take our steps, our, our lives up a notch to step toward holiness. So I pray for your blessing on every heart that is offering something to you. And that in these tried and true through the centuries practices that we would find 
a refuge into becoming exactly who you are calling us to be because we are following you in observing a holy Lent. Bless what we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. you to read with me for the closing of our service tonight. As we wash away the ashes, let it not be that we remove them, but that we wash them into our souls, mindful of our sin and your forgiveness, remembering that our time on earth is limited and that one day we will return to the earth. Give us new courage to live fully before the time of our deaths, to live humbly in light of our sin, to spend our time on this earth building bridges of grace and peace. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew right spirits within us. And now I invite us to pray the words of our Lord as a sign of our dedication to follow him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.